will boycott that advertiser. That's it, it's halftime, ladies and gentlemen. Why may have Menahunis are heading to the locker room and our score. Get your pads out. They will wait for the scoreboard to count down. Everybody's going to have to hurry back to their seats. And of course, the, uh, the concession stand out here, the Menahunis, I hope they've made some money. Oh, I think they have. Yeah. <laughs> it looks I, like it. I grabbed the last hot dog. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's good news. That means there won't be any leftover for next year. <laughs> we'll save that. Wyakea bunched up around the football, and they are giving the appearance of an onside kick. They may spread out here. We will wait and see if they do, and now they will drop back and spread out into a more normal formation. Michael Ina to kick off, and he's got the ball underway. Valen Vea will take it at the 10-yard line. Vea to the 20, he's got a hold of the 30, and out to the 35-yard line. Little pushing and shoving going on after the play. I guess uh, each of these teams trying to get a little exercise going in, but there's some uh, bumping going on. And Jay, you know, how about uh, two of your all-stars there, uh, Mason Murugucci and uh, Robert Delacruz, two-year stars, and you know, you, you, you miss them. I've seen them for all three, and you know, what great uh, kids they are too. I'll tell you, I always see Waimea players in this league, and I wonder how in the world can you replace somebody of that caliber, but they keep doing it. Villanueva into motion on the first down play. Canada going to pitch to the left side over to Jardine. He's got some blockers out in front of him, picks up five over the 40 and close to the 45-yard line before he is chased out of bounds at a nice eight-yard gain. Well, they'll spot it at the 44, so it's a seven-yard gain. And with Jardine just popping him, you know, he's also being effectively used as a decoy and uh, shows in Alden Pablo picking up 66 yards in the first half alone. Yeah, that's, that is good. You know, getting back to Mason Moriguchi, I, I'd have to put him, and if you ever were to make an all-league, all all-time, all-team, Mason, he'd have to be there. On second and short yardage, again, Pablo into motion. They're going to pitch to the near side over to the Jardine. Hit in the backfield at the 40. He has stopped. Oh, where did that defender come from? He had lined up in the backfield of Waimea. He was that quick in getting through there. Well, Waimea definitely missed uh, some kind of assignment. Uh, your blocks are definitely made to cover somebody reaching that backfield uh, that, that was quick. Lyndon Camara, who is a defensive back. He got through there untouched. Loss on that play of about four yards, so it's a third down and seven to go. Just getting our third quarter underway, 21 to seven, Waimea with the ball in the lead. Here's their third down. Ganadin with the snap, hands off Jardine, shredding a couple blockers over the 40 to the 43 yard line, and he is shoved backwards. Knocked back another three, but he did get the forward progress of the 43 yard line, and it brings up fourth down. And you know, Jay, it's just deja vu. Uh, Waimea needs to get that offense rolling. That, that loss uh, on the play really hurt him, but uh, you know, Waikia comes out with a big defensive stop early on. Waimea gets their punting unit onto the field. Ernie Shim drops back for Waiake. He has got dangerous speed. Jardine angling one towards the sideline at the 20, and it'll bounce and just go out of bounds. What a nice kick. It spins on the toe of the ball and goes out at the 12. 
Excuse me, the 17. Well, Mr. Doolittle just does a tremendous job. You know, he can't get any better. The ball just actually lands there right at the out of bounds mark. You don't give Ernie Shim any chance to make a return. That's right. He, I mean, he didn't even think about it. When he looked at the way the ball was twisting away, and, and what a beautiful kick right to the 20, and then it just rolls a few yards more before it goes out of bounds. So Waiakea has it. First and 10, down by a couple of touchdowns here. 10-24 on the clock in the third period. Man into motion going to the far side, so it'll be a triple to the right. Young hands off up the middle. Keiko Vela tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but he stumbles forward for a nice gain of about five. Takes it to the 22-yard line. Second down will be coming up and five yards to go. And looking at that first play coming out of the locker room, you can uh, see uh, Tim Lino's uh, trying to establish a ground game, a simple ground game, and seeing if they can get a quick score. Kekua Vela and Shim in the backfield. Ernie Shim, the tailback. Young again takes a snap. Hands off to Shim. Shim bouncing it outside. He's got some pursuit. He'll pick up the first down. Still on his feet across the 30, and he's dropped at the 32. Lots of running, and he's got a good gain of seven, and that's enough for the first down for Waiakea. Waiakea coming in a high formation designed to go uh, off tackle, and Ernie Shim seeing the uh, outside that was open, uh, bouncing it out and picking up good gain uh, just on his speed. So Waiakea with another first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. The ball set to the far hash mark. Everybody in tight. Now they break out of their formation, go triple to the left side. Hand off, Keiko Avela upended, and he'll flip over to the 35-yard line, picking up four yards. Well, he's got such tremendous forward momentum, Ross, that even though they stop him, he's still going to gain three yards. Well, on that play, you know, Tyson Cork comes in, hits him at the line of scrimmage, hits him low where he can uh, knock him down by himself. But, you know, you, you got to give up that yardage there. Uh, otherwise, you can't bring him down. You just have to knock him low, hope for the best. Second down and seven after that gain of three. The ball exactly at the 35-yard line. Waiake is young, on the option, rolling out, he's hitting the backfield, he is sacked. Thrown for a loss back at the 33-yard line is where they will spot it, a loss of two on the play. Ricky Fernandez picking up a great assignment there. He had the quarterback on that option play, and Ricky Fernandez having a tremendous game so far at defensive end with a nice stop there on the quarterback Johnny Young. Third down and nine at the 33-yard line. Waiake, and again for them, this is four down country. The way Tim Lino is uh, playing it, you know, he, he's playing a very uh, aggressive, taking a lot of gambles. Uh, you, you, you can just tell it's going to be two down territory here. Single setback, slot to the right side. Young, three steps back, looks over the middle, fires it, has it complete at the 40-yard line, diving forward and picking up the first down if they give him the spot, and I believe they will give him the spot. That is enough for the first down just by a football length at the 42-yard line. Ernie Shim coming out from his slot position, running a, a stop pattern right at the uh, first down marker. A great pattern and a great throw by Johnny Young. Ernie Shim, just a tremendous player, just at 5'6", uh, 145. And he really used that 5'6 to dive forward to pick up the first down. He could have been stopped easily at the 40-yard line. Instead, they move the chains, and it's another first down for Waiakea. Methodically moving down the field, 10 by 10 here. Waiamea with their linebackers right up on top. They're pointing at the lineman. Somebody must have moved. There'll be a false start against uh, Waiakea. That'll cost them 10 yards. Well, excuse me, a five-yard penalty. I guess it was wishful thinking on my part. <laughs> I would have given them 10. <laughs> no. So it's a first and 15. Clock stopped with the flag at 7 minutes and 33 seconds. Here in our third period, and again a packed house at uh, Hanapepe Stadium, this field surrounded by football fans, and they're being treated to a great football game. Young with a triple to the right side now. Drops back, the pocket collapses. He's going to scramble, hit by Salibio, and down he goes. Salibio grabbed his foot and stopped him, and Puna Rivera, the nose guard, able to help put the end to it. Jay, and the defensive backs for Waimea with good pass coverage, causing uh, Johnny Young to have to scramble, and uh, Waimea with good uh, coverage there on uh, Johnny Young as he scrambled. 
And you, you talked about the attendance. We always come in here and see you know, uh, a small crowd, but then when you really take a look as the game starts, you go, wow. Yeah, you can. If you get out there and, and take a look, especially if you try to drive out of here afterwards with the traffic, you know who was here. Here's a second down play. It'll be second and 14 with a man in motion. Young dropping back, looking to his left side. Now over the middle. Has to run out of the pocket. Oh, he's got a huge hole. 45, 50, first down, 45, and down he goes. Stop was made by Tyson Core. Sean Jardine also in on the tackle that time. Young with nobody to throw to, and that is just what a dangerous player he is with absolutely no one to throw to. He, he had a huge right side of that field wide open, and he just took it. And that's just hurts you, you know, as a defense, you know, but Johnny Young is just an exceptional athlete. Ryan May gets him in a perfect position, second and 13, and, uh, you know, they get a good pass rush, and here's Johnny Young, breaks it off, big gainer. Talking to some people at halftime, and they were kind of curious as to why Young is a quarterback. They think he should have been a running back the way he runs. I was like, but did you see him throw the ball? It is a first and 10 for Waiakea. They've got it at the Waimea 44-yard line. Big Kalani Kekua Vela with 210 pounds, the single setback for Young. Oh, a man gets an early start. No flag, however. Handoff goes absolutely nowhere. Looked like somebody had their motor running a little bit early, but I didn't see a flag go up. And Jay, the young man, uh, again, coming up with a stop was uh, Ricky Fernandez, coming in quickly from his defensive end position. Loss of two on that play. So second and 12 at the 45-yard line, ball to the far hash mark. Wyakea moving from your right to your left as you check your dial. Young starts his man into motion with that little half step back. Fakes it to the back, play action, wants to fire over the middle, incomplete, and I believe Tyson Corp may have got a finger on it, or Bobby De La Cruz, and he's pointing at somebody. And I believe he's saying, hey, you got a lineman downfield here. And that is big number 69 that was uh, rumbling down into a pass pattern. And that's what makes, uh, you know, or Robert 66. De La Cruz a tremendous linebacker. He gets back. You know, 15 yards in pass defense coverage. Uh, you know, he had, he's, a, he's an athlete. He's stocky enough to stop the run, but he can also get back and help out the defensive backs. That was Jacob Bacani at six foot two, 256 pounds. It was running a, uh, he must have been a tackle eligible. That was running up the middle. Third down now, and there's a flag, and it could be too much time. Yes, delay of game against Waiakea. <laughs> So there's a five yard penalty, making it third down and 16. But again, these situations, Ross, really don't appear to bother Johnny Young much. He's uh, such a, an accomplished young man, and he's got so much confidence in his own ability. I mean, this is a situation where, you know, guys like Ricky Fernandez and uh, Daniel Tafu and Salibio need to come up big, get a big sack for Waimea. Big third down play, slot to the left. Young drops back, looks left, over the middle, checks it, steps up out of the pocket. He's gonna have to run. And he's gonna get a first down the far sideline. 20, tackled inside the 20 at the 15. Young again, breaking free and running for a huge first down for Waiakea. Again, Waiakea with a good pass rush, good pass coverage, but you know, Johnny Young just looking like Steve Young. Uh, the way he scrambles and makes plays happen, he's just a tremendous athlete. You know, he can't fault anybody. He's just a pure, exceptional talent by Johnny Young. There's a timeout on the field, and we're going to pause with five minutes left in our third period to score Waimea 21. Waiakea on the drive with seven. The Waimea Menahoonies with their hand full on defense right now. It's Johnny Young with a first and 10 at the 17. Hands off. Kekua Vela smacked at the line of scrimmage and stopped after a short gate. He'll pick up two. It's a good stop there by uh, number five, our small undersized uh, nose guard, Puna Rivera, 5'3", 163. And he's just doing a whale of a job, too, holding up the middle. Yeah, Puna, and you know, if you look at that 5'3", it's amazing that he comes up against a team that's averaging right at six foot and, uh, and 200 pounds. What's impressive is he's the first pair they caught out uh, defense. He just takes a big look there at YK and says, I'm not scared of you. Yeah, that's true. Second down coming up, man into motion. On the reverse, Young, he's going to want to throw it. It'll be incomplete. Alden Pablo on the coverage and the pass that time was intended for Chevis 
LaMoya out of the backfield. And number 85, Michael Salivio putting on a big hit there on Johnny Young after he released the ball. Johnny Young not too happy with that hit, uh, thinking it was a little late. Yeah, he picked up a little dirt on the collar that time. So that forces a third down and eight at the 15-yard line. Waimea being asked to put up another big stand at the closing moments of the first half. They were able to come up with an interception deep in their own territory. Let's see what comes up here. Waimea desperately needs a score. On the third down, Young takes a snap, rolls to the left, looks to the end zone, heaves it up, and it's going to be incomplete. Nearly caught, but broken up. It was thrown to Leroy Shelton. Mr. Touchdown, Alden Pablo, Sean Jardine over there along with Randy Villanueva. Well, Shelton at 6'3", uh, compared to Pablo, who's 5'4", but Pablo just, uh, you know, outwilled him there on that pass, and what a great coverage there by Pablo. He was right on him all the way. It's just the height that mattered. Sheldon had it momentarily. He had his paws on it, but the defense of Waimea closed in, so it's fourth down, eight yards to go at the 15, and Waimea is going for it. The fans are starting to get up on their feet. Man into motion, being shadowed by Vea. That's Shelton. Young rolling to the left, looks into the end zone for Shelton, fires it to the corner, intercepted! YMA intercepts it in the end zone! That is Randy Villanueva! The cornerback, Randy Villanueva, stepped in front of Shelton and stole the ball! Looks like the actual receiver was William Rodriguez. And uh, he was running a quarter pattern, and uh, you know what great. Oh, excuse me, yeah. It was That's right, I gave William a touchdown once this year when it was somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah, it was Shelton, but uh, you know what great closing speed by Randy Villanueva. And uh, it was, what a big play there for uh, Wymeal. That was huge. That was monstrous. At the 20-yard line, the Metahooties with four minutes in the third period. Take the snap, handoff, Jardine, right side, he's got the hole, breaks free, 30, he's on his way, 40, 50, it's a race down the sideline, 30, 20, a man to beat, 10, touchdown, Wyoming, Sean Jardine. 80-yard run. And the Wyoming team just diving on here. Man, it ain't, don't get better for if you're a Waimea fan. Just break the heart and soul there of Waikil. Water bottles are flying. Now the coaches are gonna get the Manahoonies back under control because there's still a lot of football left to play, but what a run in Sean Jardine and the statewide press is here tonight, folks, and he is showing everybody. Jardine now gets set to do the extra point. He's, actually, he's very tired too, Jay. Yeah, you can see him really huffing and puffing out there. He is gasping for some air. Ferguson puts it down. Here's the kick. It's up. It's good. We're going to pause. 3.46 to go in the third period. And after that one, it's Waimea 28, Waikia 7. It's speed. Gerald Hurd will kick off now for the Metahoodies. A very short kick. And it's going to be taken up at the 31-yard line by Michael Ina. Looking for some running room. Dropped at the 31-yard line. Ran to the right, ran to the left. And now there's a fight on the field, and there should be an ejection. A Waiakea player knocked the Menahuni down and then stomped on his chest. I don't see a flag, however, and I can't believe they're not going to call it. It was happening right in front of two different officials, and they were both looking at it. You said that was number 63 for Waiakea, Al Ken Kekalua. And that was a very bad play, and that should not happen, does not belong here on that field. Amazing that that not, did not get a flag. First down now for Waiakea. Young is going to hand off. No, he's going to play action and throw it. It'll be complete. And oh, what a tackle at the 38-yard line. Alden Pablo just drilling Ernie Shim, and he hobbles off the field. There's a big reception, though, and a nice gain for Waiakea. So, you know, you just love to see that as a you know coach where, uh, you know, you get hit illegally. And then uh, the very next play your, play, your player shows them how to do it legally. And it really puts a good knock on them. Well, he really did. What a hit. Second down, though. Four yards to go after that gain of six. Young again to pass. Fires it over the middle. He's going to have it complete. And that'll be Kubo Jiri for another first down. And he takes it close to the midfield marker. Picking up close to 15 yards on that play. 
This is where Young is really dangerous because he just loves to throw that ball. The ball just shy of the 50-yard mark, first and 10 for Wyakea. Single setback, triple to the left. Young drops back, surveys the left, throws it over the middle, tipped, and it'll be incomplete. Yeah, great play by number 60, Ikaika Potts, who's playing linebacker, and uh, maybe they put him in there for uh, you know pass coverage purposes, but whatever they did, it worked there. I think, too, that uh, Kobayashi right now is trying to get some of his kids a little bit of a breather and some rest because they have just overexerted themselves, and he, and he can't just expend all their energy here in the third period. Second down and 10 now, coming up with 2.38 remaining in the quarter. Here's the snap, straight step back, a little tuck underneath to Keiko Vela. He's on the run and knocked down at the 40-yard line, close to the first down marker. Tyson Quarr comes up with the stop, and Tyson has come up with a big game also at a time when, you know, the coaches really said, you know, they needed a good game out of Tyson Quarr, and, you know, Quarr has stepped it up. As you can see on the scoreboard, with seven points, you know, YK is not uh, dominating uh, YMS defense. No, they're not, and that was a great play by Young. He, uh, everybody was really looking forward to the pass, and he able to, with that nice long arm of his, just wrap it around and hand it underneath to Kekua Vela. Very well executed play, but the Manahoonies again always seem to come up with that defense. You know, it's not a good, bad strategy. You let them march them down, let them eat up some of the clock, but when you get in that crucial situation down there like uh, we previously had, and you can come up with a big play, you just break their backs. It'll be a first and 10 at the 40 yard line, the Menahuni 40 yard line. Keku Avela, the single setback, slot to the left, wide out on both sides. Now the right side coming over to the left, so it'll be a triple to the left for Young when he takes the snap. He drops back, looks to the left, over the middle, throws it. He'll have it complete to Michael Ina at the 34-yard line. That'll be a gain of six on the play. Young, really a very proficient passer. Well, you look at him, I mean, you know, not knocking Glenn Freitas, but you look at him throw on the run, and, you know, he just looks like he could be just as good, I mean, at this point. Yes, and it really looks like he understands his system. He can play within whatever they've given him, you know. Tim Lino has really designed this offense around that kid, and, and it's, it's worked quite well. Second down now, coming up in five to go. Young, again, straight drop back. He's got some pressure from behind. Some of the linemen taken down. He's going to have to run, hit at the 34-yard line. Waiakea holding. They just flat out tackled on that play. There was a big rush coming in from Kaylee Aguiar, and he was just tackled as he was going after Ernie Young, who may be cramping up. He's coming up from the ground now, trying to stretch his calves. You know, again, you see the same Waiakea player trying to get some action uh, after the play. You just wish he'd get get the, what, what he wants during the play and, you know, cut that other stuff out. Yeah, he doesn't really need it. Third down and two. Menahuni fans rising for the defense. Young on a play action fake. Fires it to the end zone. It'll be incomplete. Sean Jardine breaking it up at the goal line. Pass coverage by Valen Vea, but Jardine went up and nearly had an interception. And again, as the Menahunis come in on rushing, they are being tackled as they go after the quarterback. And, you know, they are putting on some good licks on Johnny Young, which will slow him down. That time, uh, nose guard Puna Rivera put a good hit on him, and if they keep hitting him, you know, in the long run, it will it'll show to, uh, to fruit there. Fourth down and three. The ball at the 33-yard line. Young splits his receivers wide. Double slot, straight drop back, looks over the middle, heaves it to the corner, and it's going to be incomplete, thrown out of bounds, the Menahunis will take over on downs. Jay, you wonder why you call a play like that, a bomb in the end zone, you know, just a lucky, lucky shot when you just got three yards to go, you figure you look for a closer receiver, pick up the first down mark, but, uh, you know, this way, why can't just practically seals it for Waimea, if Waimea can get a score here on this drive. And they had warmed up, Ross. We watched them before the game, and they are just firing bullets of about three to five yard distance to the to their receivers. So it shouldn't have been that uh, unlikely of a situation for them to go to a short gain there. However, now on first down, they're going to hand off Jardine. Crushes it right up the middle, takes it across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Waiakea now trying to grind Sean into the ground. They've got a couple guys laying on top of him, and they kind of roll over him as they get up. 
And that is one way to kind of wear out a running back. Second down and again uh, that play of four yards. So that brings up a second and six. You know, Ball. the old saying goes, you know, when you uh, say you're going to do something, and in this case, stop Sean Jardine, you don't, and they're not. Ladies and gentlemen, we're through three quarters of play. We're headed to the fourth. It's Waimea 28, Waiakea 7. Come on, Waimea. So this ball game, the Menahunis with the ball. Second down play. Hand off and straight up the middle. First down, maybe close to the first down marker. Alden Pablo taking it out to the 43-yard line. And we'll wait for the spot and see exactly where they put it down. And they may have to measure. This looks like it will be enough. I'm surprised they're going to have to measure this one because it's, well, we'll wait and see. Actually, the angle I've got is a little crooked, so maybe they don't have it. And again, you know, why are faking the sweep to uh, Jardine with just him uh, running out on the flat and not even running very hard, but uh, Waikia yeah, just totally focusing on him, giving the ball quickly to Alden Pablo, and boom, big yardage. Pablo was stopped one inch short of the first down marker, so that brings up third down and an inch to go. And this, you know, I mean, this is almost quarterback sneak time. You just want to get that first down, I would expect. And I wouldn't think it's time to fool around, and the Menahunis really never have been one to, to come up with big trick plays in these situations. Sean Jardine in the backfield. He's going to get the call, puts his head down, crashes his way through, and now it's just going to be up for the officials to uh, unpile the scramble out there and put the ball down, and we'll see what they do with it. The marker's already flipping it over to a fourth down. Well, you know, Waikia just, you know, you know they knew that play was coming because they had like three linebackers just shooting through that exact hole that Sean Jardine tried to go through. And it is a fourth down. They're not even going to measure this one. Waimea is going to send the punting unit out there. So a loss on that play. Not much. Loss of about half the length of a football. Jardine will punt. And it was a quick punt. They've got the wrong guys on the field. And I'm sure Waikia had more than 11 on the field. Ball will bounce down and take a Menahuni roll towards the 21-yard line, but they had players running on and off the field. Waimea with a quick snap. Much more prepared for that play. And again, I think the officials caught flat-footed, Ross, because I'm, I'm sure there were more than 11 Warriors on that field. And that, you know, with a possible penalty, would have given Waimea the first down. But, uh, you know, again, Waimea sitting in a good position with a 21-point lead with just 11 minutes to go. It's just hang on time. Well, that sounds scary to me. Hanging on is never fun in football. <laughs> I don't care if you're Notre Dame or who. It just, you don't know. That's right. Whoa. Not when you have a Johnny Young for a quarterback who can throw like he can. That's right. And you know already he's got a huge arm. And there is no wind tonight. Now, normally, well, there is a slight trade wind breeze now beginning to pick up. And if it was normal trades, this quarter he'd be throwing into the face of the wind, which would make a difference. But uh, we, it's a very still night, and a, just a beautiful football night. I mean, this is fall at its best. We had our share of bad weather uh, recently, boy, so yeah, I think we, we deserve a few nice nights like this. Absolutely, and boy, this is a, a big, big night. For Waimea, this is a huge night for the entire KIF, and we certainly uh, 
I'd like to send our aloha and hellos to uh, the Red Raiders, hopefully here tonight, and the Kapaha Warriors, and I'm sure that both of those clubs dream of one day having this opportunity. Yes, you know, a victory like this, uh, you know, for Waimea, is not one just for Waimea, it's one for Kauai. It's about respect, and, uh, you know, we think we play a good brand of ball here, but, you know, many others out there don't think so. And a win like this gives us some credibility, and, you know, I hope all coaches are cheering for uh, Waimea on this one, uh, you know, on Kauai, and, uh, you know, when the other teams get in there too, you know, I, I'm sure Waimea will will do the same. I would think if Tim Lino thinks the BIIF is the uh, the dog of the big three, um, I would have to think that statewide KIF is more or less perceived to be the runt of the litter. Well, you know, uh, uh, talking to him earlier, he was so confident about his team and the talent. Uh, you know, it's a year mature team that beat Waimea, you know, handily last year. And, uh, you know, he's talking about taking on St. Louis, but, uh, you know, the team that showed up here tonight, I think uh, they would be probably embarrassed by St. Louis, and I think, you know, Waimea would, would give them a much better game. Oh, absolutely. Although I, I'd be really scared. I wouldn't even put UH up against St. Louis. Yeah. First and 10 at the 21-yard line for Johnny Young and the Warriors of Waiakea. Young settles behind the center. Drops back, looks to the left side. He'll have a completion. Still on their feet, out to the 30 and across to the 33-yard line. And taking that carry, Chevis Lamoya. Lamoya with a nice catch, but an even better run after the catch. Clock stops, so Lamoya, well, now it will start again. So I guess he did not get run out of bounds. But it was enough for the first down at the 33-yard line. Slot to the right side, wide out to the right side as well. Young checks them off, looks at the defense, takes it, drops straight back, has some pressure, looking to the left, fires over the middle, tipped and incomplete. Oh, and once again, Ikaika Potts with his fingertips on the ball. Getting a big bear hug out there by Tyson Core. And a big pass rush again by Puna Rivera, along with uh, Daniel Tafua, putting on a good hit again on Johnny Young, making him pay every price for waiting to that last second. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. Ball still placed at the 33-yard line. Waiake at their own 33. Very tight formation now. They got everybody stacked in close to the line. Young dropping back, looking for protection. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Whistling a bullet, and again, he gets smashed. Daniel Tafua right there on top of him. Pass was intended for Michaelina out over the middle. And, you know, the thing you like to see is that, you know, you're seeing YKL a lot of times, you know, doing exceptionally a lot of late hits and then they're raising their hands like uh, WrestleMania. But, you know, just look at the scoreboard and uh, Wyman's just playing a clean game, doing their thing and beating them right on the field. Third and ten coming up here. Huge down for the Metahoonies on defense. Young to throw again. Has a completion. Michael Ina's got it for the first down and he takes it into Metahoonie territory. He'll take it to the 47-yard line. That'll move the chains and move everybody into the other side of the field. Clock will stop as they move the chains with 10 minutes remaining in the ball game. Young now going to hurry it up. Gets everybody to the line of scrimmage quickly. Takes the snap. Straight drop back. Deep into the pocket. Throws over the middle. Has another completion. It's Lamoya. Lamoya stumbling and tripping and diving forward. He'll have a first down and he gets out to the 32-yard line. So now Young just picking apart the Metahuni defense. Well, Jay, again, you know, going back to, uh, you know, that pass rush, if they give Donnie Young time, he's going to find receivers open. They got three, four receivers out there. <laughs> they need to put the... Uh, better pass rush there on Johnny Young. Another first down, Young with the snap, drops back, short step, throws it, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage and it'll be incomplete. One of the Metahoonies got their hands up. Maybe Ricky Fernandez got his hand on there or else Michael Salibio. Yes, it looks like it was Fernandez and that's something. If you don't get that pass rush, he's throwing a lot of bullets across the middle, get that hands up and try to get that hand on that ball. Second down and 10 now. Ball at the 32 yard line. Waiakea trying to mount a drive of their own. It has been a long drought for them. Now they go to the I formation. Another play action. 
Young to throw, scrambles out of the pocket, fires it, and it'll be incomplete and nearly picked off by Jardine. That one he just threw too darn hard, Ross. He just burned that thing through his receiver. And again, you know, making that play happen, Alden Pablo just having a whale of a game back there in the defensive backfield, right on the receiver with good coverage on that college prospect that they have, uh, Lura Shelton. Uh, can't say enough about Alden Pablo. He's just come up big time this year. Sheldon again with an awful lot of touchdowns. He has caught 13 TDs for Waiakea this season. Here's a third down now. Third and 10 at the 32-yard line. The Minahuni 32. Young rolling to his right. Fires it. It'll be incomplete. Thrown too high. Fourth down. The pass was aimed in the direction, or actually tossed to Jared Terramoto. But it was uh, tossed a little bit too high and he just and thrown too hard. You just can't get up there to catch a hard pass that way. That's a hard one to throw, those out patterns. And, uh, you know, Johnny Young just uh, didn't get a good spiral there on that throw. Wyman just needs another good stop here and uh, they'll practically just kill uh, YKR. Approaching the 9 minute 20 second mark. Young looking over the defense, Waimea spreading it out. Young steps back, looks for the first down, rolling, has some pressure, fires it, wobbly pass, and it's going to be incomplete, thrown out of bounds, and Young was crushed. Oh, what pressure coming after him by Kaylee Aguiar. That's a second good pass rush by Kaylee Aguiar, a reserve player, and uh, you know, he's come up big time too. The reserves are hungry. The whole entire team is just hungry, and uh, what a whale of a ball game by that Waimea defense. Nobody in their right mind would think that they could hold uh, YK to seven points. That's, yes, that's absolutely uh, an impossible task if you would have asked anybody prior to this ball game. First down, the Menahunis with nine minutes and 12 seconds to go before they can claim a championship. They will hand it off. Pablo straight up the middle out to the 35-yard line, gains three or four yards on the play. They'll mark it at the 36, I think. Yes, they will. The amazing thing about that Waimea defense, they're stopping the same YK team that scored 38 points on them. A year and ago. all that skill position players are all back. For they all game. came back, Ross. You're absolutely right. And not only that, they've had 13 games preparation for this, and they really have honed their skills. YK is an outstanding football team. Second down now, coming up. What can you say about Justin Ganadin? Hands off. Jardine hitting the backfield, struggling forward, gets to the line of scrimmage and gains a yard. Justin Ganadin getting his first start of the season in tonight's ball game. Not only is it just his first start, but this is the biggest ball game he's ever been in. He hasn't had a fumble. He hasn't, you know, uh, missed any assignments. And, uh, you know, he's just played a hell of a ball game from, uh, coming out of the reserve. What a tremendous game for Justin. You're going to have a great quarterback next year. Third and five now coming up for the Minahunis. Ganadin with a pitch to Jardine, coming around the near sideline. Hit at the 40, breaks free. 45, 50, caught from behind and dragged down at the 45 yard line. Takes it for a first down and moves it into Waiakea territory. Jay, it's those plays, uh, besides those long breakers like that, where he just shows power, determination to get that first down, being hit before the marker and breaking it loose. You know, they question his size and everything. They gotta just come down and take a look because, uh, you know, Sean Jardine is an exceptional player. This is interesting. The ball is set right now at the 47-yard line, but if you look at the markers, the down marker, it's halfway to the 46, so they're going to have to go 10 and a half yards to pick up a first down here, the way the chains are set and where the ball is. <laughs> and now Gannadin going to take a timeout. We're going to pause right along with him. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go in this ball game. It's Waimea 28, Waiakea 7. can hold on at the Waiakea 47 it's a first and 10 Ganadin with Pablo into motion to the far side fakes it to Jardine throws it over the middle to Vea who was wide open and he drops the ball Vea was 35 yards from Pater and nobody between him and the goal line again Waiakea just came up stacked up with nine guys up and Vea Vea had no one covering him but a tremendous pass rush by Waiakea uh, Gunnett and threw the ball a little low, practically because he had a guy on him. But, uh, you know, good, good play called by Waimea. Almost break, broke loose a uh, big play, probably for a touchdown. And Vea knew it, too. Hand off to Pablo. He's going to break through. Takes it to the 30 for a first down. 15. 
15 yard run for Alden Pablo. He's over the century mark tonight. Yeah, you know, it's not, not exaggerating, but you know, why me? I just playing uh, the best game I've ever seen them play. I mean, the coaching job is just awesome. Uh, they're calling the right plays at the right times, and uh, they just have the boys sky high playing above their heads. What a great uh, I'll job! I tell you what, job. if there was a game ball, it's got to go to that offensive line. On the first down play, they're going to hand off. It's Pablo hit at the line of scrimmage. They're trying to strip the ball from him, and we'll find out if they were successful in that. They were really grappling and fighting in there. A Waikia player comes up with a ball, but I believe they will have blown it dead. It'll be second down for the Menahunis, and Pablo nearly stripped of that ball. Gains a yard on the play, second down and nine, now at the 29-yard line. Pablo and Jardine in the backfield, about four yards behind the quarterback. Hand off to Jardine, breaks through the middle of the hole. 20, 15, dragging to the 10 to the nine. Dragging and leaving Waiakea players lane, face down in the turf. Looks like a lady at penalty too, Jay, after the play, or a face mask. And Jardine looking back, like what, you guys need some more? We'll wait for the call. It'll be a personal foul against Waiakea. You respect the team that comes out and plays hard, but you know, when they are losing, can't take it like a man. You know, you just look down and say, man, you know, the guy's got no control there. You still got some things to learn about the game, and you can go back to last year's lessons where the Metahooties were spanked severely, but yet they held their head up and played like champions. There was not a play anything like this. Waiakea, in the face of adversity, kind of losing their cool occasionally. On first and goal, they're going to hand off, and it's going to be Pablo. He's tackled immediately as he goes to the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard gain, and again, more pushing and bumping and shoving. Waiakea, quite frankly, folks, came in here bragging and boasting about how they were going to take care of the Menahunis. They have never felt that Waimea belonged on the same field as them. And here they are, down 28-7 to with five and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. It is now a second down and goal at the four. Hand off to Jardine, right side, smashes in, touchdown Waimea! Sean Jardine does it again! And are these fans proud of their man who is or what? I mean, you know, just, they're, they're just embracing a team that has just committed themselves to excellence and they've just, they've, they've topped it off right here with the greatest performance ever on this field. You know, you didn't hear one word over the last month about Waimea talking, preparing, or saying anything about this football game. They just went about their business. They were not rattling the newspapers. They weren't shuffling around at the radio stations statewide. Here's Jardine for the extra point now. Snap is good. Ferguson's hold is good. The kick, it's up, it's good. We're going to pause. 527 left in this big ball game. It's Waimea 35, Waikea 7. Give them the luck. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He wants to share their information. And, uh, you know, just you know, take a hat off to John because he's a tremendous asset to uh, Waimea High School. Boy, he is. And he is just another in a long line of just great coaches and Kobayashi making a name of his own. Here's the kickoff by Gerald Hurd. It'll be picked up by Michael Ina. Going to the left, going to the right, trying to juke his way upfield. And he gets to the 35. And now a flag goes up late. And again, a Waikia player coming up feisty. Grabbing and pushing, and one of the Menahunis getting knocked backwards now. You know, this thing got to stop. Uh, I'm glad Coach Dino is getting out there because, uh, you know, just looking at the scoreboard, you know who's uh, you know, precipitating all of this stuff. And it just is a sad sight. They ought to end the game right now because they, they won't be able to catch up even if they try. It's sad. And this is the time where you have to show your dignity uh, in defeat. And that's a, that is an important aspect. And that's something that, uh, well, anybody that plays Waimea in football has to learn that. <laughs> because you're going to take it sooner or later with this program. You don't like to get a black mark on a game like this where, you know, it's an important game. You want a neighbor island bow to get that rap. Where, yeah, you know, there was a brawl in that year and, you know. Uh, Wyman's not asking for it. We're telling the kids, they're probably telling the kids to walk away, but you know, there's so much of this going on that it's hard. Unsportsmanlike penalty against 
Waiakea, 15 yards marched off, so it'll be a first down and 25 to go for the 19-yard line. Young to drop back, looks deep, will throw it short. He has it complete to Lamoisa. Out to the 30, tackled from behind, and Puna Rivera chasing him down. And look at Rivera play tonight. This guy's got some speed. I don't know where he got it from, but he's got some speed. Chevis Lamoya is very quick, one of the quickest sprinters anywhere. And that time Puna caught him from behind. And Jay, that time alignment again, trying to get a late hit in, and you gotta respect Ernie Shim, their all-star slot back, who's pushing back his own player. To cut it out. Big gain on that. It sets up a second down and nine, so they get all of the penalty back and then a yard. Young to heave it very, very deep. Throws it up for anybody, and it's going to be incomplete. Randy Villanueva with perfect defensive position to go up and make that play impossible. And Jay, with a passing game such as YK, you mean you got to take your hat off to our little DBs here uh, from Wyoming High School. No long completions. You know, the only long uh, gainers were short passes that uh, went long or Johnny Young scrambling. But the Wyoming DBs are playing a tremendous ball game. And you have to think about this. A sophomore, the Menahunis put a sophomore up against the top pass receptor receiver in the state. He's got the 13 touchdowns. Villanueva gets his assignment, and what a job he does tonight. Here's third down now and nine to go at the 35. Young again dropping to throw. Heaves it to the far side. Tipped and incomplete off the fingertips of his receiver. Ikuavela in the face of one of the Menahunis and Maxi Moreno was had his hand on the flag. They almost got another one. Fourth down coming up. And you can bet that uh, Kekovella wouldn't challenge Big Maxi because Maxi at his age can still hold more than his own. <laughs> hey, I've seen him play some He's softball games, and, and he looks like he can still get some shoulder pads on and go for it. Oh, yeah. Him and Harold were both solid men. High snap on the punt. They're going to come after it, and there's going to be a roughing the kicker or a running into the kicker. Oh. Menahunis will let the ball go. Puna Rivera knocked off of his feet, and he's coming up going, what happened? And so is Daniel Tafua trying to plead his case. And Jay, what makes it worse is that Sol Solibio gets a, you know, rough in a kicker penalty. And after the kicker gets up, he kicks uh, Solibio in the back. I mean, just. So what does that say about the program? <laughs> and, but, you know, <laughs> you know I could teach already... you to win, but it, w what, what are the better aspects or assets to have in, in your later life? <laughs> but, but Maxi walked away, he couldn't see it. So yeah, no that's twice we've seen him away. kick people. Saw one guy stomp a, a Menahuni on the chest. See, the penalty, I believe, is going to take it to the 50-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. You know, hats off to Dawson and Mark because uh, through the whole season, you know, with the dominant team that Waimea has had, they've kept their key teams under control and, uh, you know, most of all, just let their players play the game, learn the game, and enjoy the game, and get, get what the game can give them. And uh, that's the important thing, not the winning or losing. From midfield at the 50-yard line with 419 to go in the ball game. Young on first and 10, drops deep back, throws it over the middle, and here is, oh, Sean Jardine nearly picks it off. Jardine screened out of the play just a little bit by Valen. He was coming across and had a clear beat on it, coming playing just center field, incomplete second down. Even monkeys fall off trees sometimes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sometimes. Second down, still at the 50-yard line. Clock stops at 4:10. With that incompletion, Menahunis, and they appear to be catching a little bit of wind here. I think they're going to have plenty of gas to finish this game. Young takes the snap, drops back, looks off to his right side, now throws it over to the left side. He's got a completion for no gain. A nice little screen to Michael Ina to his wide receiver, but it was read perfectly and they were thrown for a yard loss. And Alden Pablo again, a big play, ignoring the blocker, Ernie Shim just going right through him and making a tackle for a loss. Awesome play there by Alden. You know, Ross, looking at this, this is one of the most complete 
victories I have ever seen for any football team at, at any time. You know, you can look and pick everything apart. The offensive line play, just superb. The quarterback has more than done his job. The running backs, every one of them has certainly done their jobs. Defense has come up. The linebackers have played. The corners have played. The safeties have come up with, with the interceptions when they need it. Daniel Tafool with a huge night on that offensive line. You know, put a Rivera the nose guard. Where has he come? He is all over the field. Everybody has really executed their assignments tonight. Well, if you appreciate, you know, prep football uh, this is ultimate you know perfection uh, the way the coaches and players have performed you just can't say enough about this performance as I say you know the most dominating uh, performance I've ever seen uh, by a Kauai high school team uh, any Kauai high school team played even more than you guys over Y&I? Oh, I, I of course, it, it took Richard Jim with a big interception to save that one. Well, we had more mistakes in that game than uh, this. This game has just been free, of, free of mistakes yeah. and just ultimate uh, team, team uh, performance there and coaching the job. He's the guy that caught the ball. We'll take it after that. Sweetie, man. <laughs> That's a junior and uh, looks like an ankle or a knee injury and looks pretty bad, but we'll let's hope for the best for Mike. Third and 11 as the clock starts again. Young to throw. Looking, he's hit in the pocket. Scrambles free, on the run, hit from behind and down he goes. Body slamming and sliding. Young stopped just short of the first down marker. And there's one guy still scrapping for Mike yeah, and that's that quarterback, Johnny Young, and he's played a clean ball game. Can't say enough about him as an athlete. You know, he'd still get my vote for one of the top quarterbacks oh, in the state. I'd put him on that first team all state. And I'll tell you, this is this has got to be one of the strongest cases for neighbor islands making that first team. Neighbor island players never make the first team all state in anything. And I don't care how well they play. They just don't get it. Tonight, we have seen some people that's truly deserve it. Sean Jardine, the offensive line for the Menahunis. Here's the quarterback, Johnny Young, to throw on fourth down. He's got to complete the shim. Hit behind the first down marker, but he's going to break free and pick up five to get to the 35 and a first down. And Jay, that's the second guy that keeps playing hard. Uh, Ernie Shim hit there before the first down marker and picking up on sheer de determination uh, the first down. You know, I could see him and Leroy Shelton making the first team also. But I, and I really think that, you know, when you recognize Sean Jardine in the way that you do, you've got to realize that it was the offensive line that got him the holes. And if he doesn't carry a couple of those linemen with him to that All-State team, and if he doesn't get the All-State team, and Stacy kind of shows here from the Honolulu Advertiser, and I, I was in his ear already about it, what he's seen tonight should be enough to take home and tell those guys, hey, those, it's for real. But that defense, just a team defense, who do you credit, you know, I mean, but definitely somebody deserves to be there. There is a, performance. a flag is thrown for a delay of the game, so that'll be five yards and a first and 15, moving the ball back to the 40-yard line. It's just a shame that, you know, the Oahu teams, and, and rightly so, I mean, they see each other so often, and they, but they really have kind of got too much of a belief that they're the only ones that can play the games. Right. Rolling around, Young on first and 15, fires a bullet, it'll be incomplete. Pass was thrown to Leroy Shelton, and he takes a shot at Robert De La Cruz after he misses the play. But you would think, you know, with as many neighbor island teams that have won baseball titles, as well as neighbor island teams have done in neighbor islands, and if you look at the fact that there is no statewide um, playoff system for football, somewhere somebody sooner or later got to recognize that the neighbor islands do play good football. Well, you know, they just need to recognize, you know, whose uh, teams are playing, and look at Keiko Vela, what a great uh, player he could be in Honolulu, and Wyman has been able to stop him. Absolutely. On second down and 15, Young from deep in the pocket, hit as he lets it go. He's got a completion to Shim. Shim wrapped at the 30, still on his feet into the 27-yard line. My goodness, Ernie Shim, they cannot bring him down. He is tough. We are under two minutes. Clock has stopped, and I guess he must have been knocked out of bounds. For them to stop the clock, he did not pick up the first down. I mean, just looking at Ernie Shim, he just reminds me so much of Randall Okimoto, just a block. I mean, you know, you can tell he can lift some weights. He's big for a small guy. Wiry but tough and strong. Third down now, coming up. Third and short yardage. Young to roll, the southpaw changes his mind, tucks it in, he's going to run it up the field. Everybody coming after him, he'll be tackled inside the 20-yard line, picks up the first down. Daniel Tafua, and there's a flag. Same guy, number 62 again. And it'll be a personal foul against Waiakea. 
They just have no control over themselves in this ball game, and it has been going on the entire game. And with a minute 48, I mean, you just wonder why the Waikia coaches also take them out. You know, I mean, they're continually making these uh, cheap shots. Shots, I think, is the, uh, the the call. A cheap shot. And and you know, by leaving them in there, it's, it's just giving them justification for it. It's telling them it's okay to do it. That's really the message that the, that he's sending. But uh, I hope that uh, Coach and his staff got the message that the Menahunis laid out for him tonight. Well, you know, they, they uh, beat Waimea in good fashion last year, and uh, you need to take that too. Uh, sometimes you're going to lose too. First and 25 back at the 34-yard line. Young drops the snap, picks it up, hit and tackled immediately for no gain. Let's see, crunching right on top of him, that was uh, Randall Palau. And here's another thing. John Kobayashi has played everybody on his team throughout the entire season. They've gotten into every game. This is the first time I have ever seen a complete unit get into every single game. He has had the, the fortunate opportunity to get his players in, and he is doing it again tonight. They have got championship experience. Here's a big rush against Young. He's sapped. Oh, -ho, Ricky Fernandez. Yeah, I mean, that's just a sleeper of the game. They needed a big play from the defensive ends, and Ricky Fernandez has been there a lot of crucial situations. What a big game for Ricky. Third down and a ton to go with 30 seconds left in this ball game. I don't know what it's going to take to get the Manahuni fans on their feet, but this is the moment. The clock will count. We are getting to 20 seconds now. Third down and a huge 35 to go. Young drops back. Has some pressure. Fires as he is hit. Here comes Villanueva incomplete. Nearly picked it off at the 20 yard line. And again, Ernie Young just smashed to the turf. Michael Solibio in there with a few other of the defenders. Eight seconds and the clock is stopped. The buckets are being dumped on the coaches. Kobayashi gets it. Aku gets it. And they need They're another, all getting it. They need another bucket there for Butch Agu. Yeah, they do. He's just, he's <laughs> they, just half wet now. He's a two-bucket coach. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth down with eight seconds. The Menahutis <laughs> can breathe easy and celebrate. What a Christmas present come early. You think they're going to have some fun at Thanksgiving next week? <laughs> Woo! Listen to the fans. They're roaring at this stadium. The Menahunis hand in hand. Elated on the sideline. Young scrambling on his fourth down. Throws it. He's got to complete to Shelton. Shelton tackled at the 30. This game is over. The Waimea Menahunis are the neighbor island champions. Our final score from Hanapepe Stadium. Waimea, 35. Waiakea, 7. Stay tuned for our post-game show. It's coming right up.